this is our solution. This is the dongle. Mm -hmm. Okay, this is the little guy we've got right here. The shark fin, or what we are ca affectionately calling the shark fin right now, is what you see on the right-hand side of the television set is what we're going to transmit to. Yeah. Now, this particular one, and this version for this customer, has HDMI out, mm -hmm. but it also has a VGA out and a three and a half inch, or three and a half millimeter jack for older television sets that only have a VGA and three and a half input. They're also going to put a USB jack on it, so you can plug a hard drive into it and access the hard, hard drive. drive. Okay. okay. So what you see, and so as I said, this is basically driverless. We've already gotten this thing set up, and I'm going to run in mirror mode just mm -hmm. because it's easier yeah. to yeah. explain to people. And the other thing I want to tell you is we were talking about the 60 gigahertz rocket fish. Mm -hmm. Here's half of it. Okay, this is one half of a 60 gigahertz solution. So what I have to do is put this next to my laptop, plug an HDMI cable into here. Oops, I don't have an HDMI output. And a power supply into here, and I have the same thing that sits over near the TV, and it costs $600. This solution is going to be on the market at the end of at the end of March for under, sub 200 MSRP. Well, that's nice. Okay, that's the plan. Okay, so. Uh, let's take a look at a 720p trailer. Uh, Avatar or the new Alice in Wonderland? Which one do you want to see? Tough choice? Let's do Alice in Wonderland. Alice in Wonderland. Because everybody yeah. does Avatar. Yes. So let's look at this. This is going to be a very strange movie. So this is a 720p video. I'll go ahead and crank some volume and then I'll dull it here in a minute. Very seamless. It, it's 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 good. <laughs> it is. <laughs> so, as you can see, a 720p video and integrated audio, it, it, there's no artifacting, okay? There's very little to any latency that you can see between the television set and what's going on on your monitor, and fundamentally, it looks great, right? And like I said, I don't think most people, and most people will probably tell you that they really can't see the difference between 720p and 1080 anyway. So right now we're only at a 720p, though we will be going faster, and we are also going to be doing H.264 oh, in, in the future. So anyway, so that gives you kind of a quick idea as to what that looks like. So that's one thing. Let's take a look at what happens when you stream from the web, Yeah. which of course is an interesting question. So I think um, I'm going to do Hulu, if you don't yeah. mind. We'll just, we'll just run some Hulu. So um, I am actually running, and I will admit I'm running a wired connection here because mm -hmm. the wireless in this hall is horrid. Oh, yes. Okay, but in all of my demos, we always run wireless, and it, you won't really see any difference. It depends on your connection. So let's run a Hulu stream, and I'm going to put it into HD, their HD mode, which is really only 480p. Yeah. Yeah. And then we'll put it into full screen, and you'll take a look at what it looks like. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. So that is streaming video from the web. That's a 480p. Yeah, it's just 480p. But more than watchable. Yeah. Definitely right? I mean, more than this. Yes. Okay. Yes. Very much watchable. I mean, something you would enjoy is the, is the reality. Okay, and of course, certainly I can do Skype and I can surf and I can do anything I want. Um, the other issue that you need to look at when you start looking at these solutions is what does text look like? Okay, because what you find is is that no, some no people may be able to do video. Mm -hmm. Video and text are very much different, and you'll see missing pixels and you'll see that kind of stuff going on. So this particular solution has been also optimized to take a look at text, so you can actually read it, and so it looks good. So here's you know a typical example of a PowerPoint, and as you can see, it's clear. It's yep. you know not you're not missing pixels, you're not getting anything weird and strange. Font is very sharp and crisp. Okay, and sharp and crisp. And so you know I would tell you when you look at video solutions, the other thing you really need to look at is that because if I'm doing Facebook, if I'm doing you know MySpace, if I'm doing any of that stuff, if the text is not readable, that's problematic. Okay, so. That's a, that's a quick demonstration of just the video stuff. Now, I also happen to have another demo in here, which is kind of an interesting idea. Um, you know, media, uh, um, 
the USB hard drive market is changing drastically. Mm -hmm. And basically what's happening is USB hard drives has become a commodity, but we're starting to get all these NAS media player, you know, how do I get my stuff onto a storage unit that I can play on the HDTV? Yeah. So what we've done on this particular demo is, I have, if you look over to the so right side of the television set, you'll see two things. Number one is, you'll see a, a black box with an antenna on it. That is a wireless hard drive. Okay. What you'll also see is an antenna sticking out of the side of the television set. Okay. Just a little stub of the antenna. Yes. What I've done is I've taken the same USB dongle that we were, that I was showing you before, and I've stuck it in the TV set. Okay. Now remember, I told you it was driverless. Yeah. So what I can do is this: I can take that particular dongle, unplug it from the TV, mm -hmm. plug it into my laptop. My laptop will then automatically connect to the hard drive, right? Then I can drag my media, just like I normally drag and drop. Yeah. I drag my media, whether it be photos or movies or whatever, drag it onto the hard drive, unplug the dongle from my laptop, then go plug the dongle into the USB port on the HDTV. And now it's a mass storage device for the TV. And many of the uh, HDTVs now support USB as a mass storage option. Mm -hmm. Some of them support video, some of them don't, because the codecs have to be built into the television set. Yeah. Otherwise, you have to use a DMV or a DMA box or something of that particular type, and I'll show you one of those in a minute. But this particular one, so if I take a look at the sources on this, you'll see something that says USB. Mm -hmm. So we'll go over to the USB source, and you'll see it's got a media, it's got media there. So I can go ahead and look at media that I dragged and dropped over to that particular source using my television set. So I get to look at you know my family pictures, I get to look at movies, I get to look at music, and how did I get it there? Well, I just unplugged the dongle and moved it over to here to move it, and then moved it back to the television set. Um, you know, as I said, it, it's dependent as to what you have on here and what your TV can do, but you know, I can also um, stream a movie if I need to stream a movie. Okay, so that happens to be a movie that I've got on there. So there's lots of different there's lots of different options that I have once I do that. But that is um, starting to be interesting. Certainly starting to be interesting to the wireless hard to the hard drive guys to try and differentiate from the commodity of a USB hard drive, which is you know 80 bucks for a terabyte, um, to try and add something to it that provides them with something more interesting to sell. Yeah. Okay?